Yara Phil Karim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. It is February the 15th, 2017. Incredible meeting took place today between President Donald Trump and that of Prime Minister Netanyahu of Israel. It was a very interesting meeting, although the uh, RT sta- uh, titles their own article about it. Trump asked Netanyahu to hold off on settlements, promises, or settlements and promises a, uh, a great peace deal. Great peace deal in the making. In fact, President Trump went so far as to say that you don't need a two-state solution in order to bring about a great peace deal. But he did kind of leave it off to the two leaders, that of Mahmoud Abbas and Prime Minister Netanyahu, to negotiate out their own deal. And then no one else really needs to be interfering with their negotiations to peace. Prime Minister Netanyahu did set those parameters. And one of those parameters was to be the PA would have to recognize the, uh, the Israeli state and that they would also be required to allow full Israeli control of the West Bank included, military control of these areas. I, can't, I have to kind of stand, stand with Prime Minister Netanyahu on that. There are so many uh, settlements inside of what is called the West Bank today, but you have to remember even as Avi Ablo was on our own program that stands by the 1922 League of Nations agreement that gave everything west of the Jordan River to, for a Jewish homeland. And why they reneged on that promise in 1947 with the United Nations is really beyond anybody's belief, but they did renege on that promise as they did the promise in 1920. But as a result, Israel fought for their own independence in 1948. The Jordanians did defeat the Israelis in the war that that ultimately led to what we call the modern-day West Bank. But as Avi Ablo pointed out, this was occupied land from 1947 to 1967 when Israel reclaimed that that was promised to them under the 1922 uh, League of Nations Agreement. So it's kind of a reversal role here, and maybe this is something that President Trump sees himself. But right now, unfortunately, President Trump is finding himself in a whirlwind of trouble with, with his own administration and all the, the witch hunters that are out there trying to bring him down with all kinds of allegations that the Trump administrations and the people that he has surrounded himself with have been deeply involved with the Russians. We'll go there in just a moment. But actually, let's first start off right here. This is uh, Congressman Joe Courtney here. He is a uh, Republican Democrat for Connecticut. And he brought out something today, which was shared with me, or excuse me, the other day that was shared with me by a sister that had placed, placed, placed it in the comments on one of our videos there, that there was actually a ship, a Russian spy ship off the coast of Connecticut, not far from one of the uh, U.S.'s oldest submarine bases in America. Listen to what he has to say here. Mr. Speaker, as we're sitting here in this uh, chamber, uh, right now, off the coast of Groton, Connecticut, 30 miles from the uh, Groton Navy subbase, which is the oldest submarine base in America, there is a Russian spy ship, the Viktor Leonov, that is loitering, as uh, was reported this morning uh, from the Navy and uh, news source. Now, Congressman Courtney actually brings out that the uh, that the Russian ship is a spy ship off of the coast of um, off off the coast of Connecticut and it's just loitering around. But you know, and I'm not for that myself. As an American, definitely I don't want the Russians spying on us, but then again, has anybody forgotten that we have about 10,000 Russian soldiers inside the United States? If you remember, go back about, oh, three years ago, maybe longer than that, uh, we had on our program here, uh, Mina, Mina Gribben, and Mina, or Mina Lee uh, Gribben, who actually, was, uh, I think it was her sister that attested to this. We had been hearing back then that there were Russians that were brought in as part of uh, United Nations training forces inside the United States, and it was her own sister that had seen this firsthand for herself, those Russian troops in California. And had she not seen it for herself, she said she wouldn't have believed it. But yes, there are Russian troops inside the United States, quite a bit of them, in fact, as we have seen there, more of them being out west than in the other part of the United States there. What they're actually there for? Well, no one really seems to know. And when it comes to the Russians spying on the United States, well, they do the same thing that we do to them. They've also had many Russian submarines that are very much inside our waters, even up into the Gulf of Mexico, spying on the United States. Of course they are. 
The United States does the same thing to Russia. It's really tit for tat, so to speak. They're always spying on one another. All right. But the thing is, though, is notice, though, Joe being a Democrat, they're trying to highlight this whole issue about Russia and the threat of Russia to the United States. I really don't think Russia is that big of a threat to the United States as what they're making it out to be. But in this case here, they're doing it for a reason. And that's to target President Donald Trump. In a recent article here put out by Sputnik News, House of Cards, as it's called, Democrats planning Nixon-style impeachment for Trump. Why are they trying to impeach President Trump? Well, any of you guys might know that of Mr. Flynn here, a former or retired general for the United States military, when he came in with Trump as one of his own advisors there, one of the first things he wanted to do was to shake up the FBI and CIA, the government establishments there. That same establishment is very much pro-Clinton. The same establishment, even though Clinton's own emails and Podesta's own emails and everybody else's own emails clearly indicted this whole entire group of every wicked evil you could possibly believe against the United States government and the people of the United States. But yet the FBI exonerated her as if she was just as clean as a whistle. But when it comes to Trump getting into power, they're definitely on the war path now. And see, Trump was going in there to try to clean up that mess. He brought in a good man to do it, it seems like, but now he's being thrown under the bus. You know, I've not always had the greatest thoughts in mind when it comes to President Trump. I've been very concerned myself over some of the people he surrounded himself uh, when he was campaigning, like that of Kenneth Copeland, who is very much involved with the Pope of Rome, Pope Francis, and a lot of the evils of bringing about a new world order. That's been some of my own concerns. But I also see that President Trump has been trying to keep a lot of his campaign promises, and he was really trying to reach out there and do some good for the nation. But then we see reports like this from Bill Palmer, uh, who definitely doesn't seem to be a Trump supporter as well, and neither does the New York Times or the Washington Post or CNN or any of the rest of these news agencies that are in the, in the United States. They're all against the Trump administration. Bill Palmer, just to give you an idea of how much they're throwing them all under the bus, writes this here. Impeach Trump now, it states. The smoking gun came this evening when it leaked that FBI has identified four senior members of the Donald Trump campaign who conspired by phone with Russia. Intelligence agents during the election, Michael Flynn, Roger Stone, Carter Page, and Paul Manafort, have all been caught red-handed in the collusion by the FBI. In addition, Flynn appears to have lied to the FBI last month when he was questioned, which is a crime in itself. Well, I've even seen the transcripts of the conversation that he had. And where's the lie? Where's this? What, I mean, it's, it's just really ridiculous what I'm seeing. So although I may not agree with everything that President Trump is doing or I don't agree with all of his plans, I still think the man is trying to do good. And when I see things like this, it seems all the more obvious that Trump is trying to do a decent job for the American people. But there's definitely someone in power trying to bring him down. Is it because they want Mike Pence to be president? Or will neither one of them be? What happens if they take them both out? Mike Pence, though, although he is a great ally to Israel, and I appreciate that stance that Mike Pence has, but he is not a great ally to Russia. So if Mike Pence does replace uh, President Trump, if, if they do impeach him, that is, there's a lot of concern as well that someone may try to take him out from being president altogether. All kinds of things seem to be creeping up, a lot of threat to him staying in office. I don't know what the end, end, time, end run is going to be of this, but one thing's for sure, it is obvious that they're trying to railroad him out of Washington. And if President Trump leaves office, I do not look for a hopeful future when it comes to war. That is one thing's for certain. For certain. Even as Russia reiterates the refusal to return Crimea to Ukraine, after Maria Zakharova uh, stated, who is the uh, spokesman for the uh, for Russian the Russian Federation, uh, she was echoed again today by Dmitry Peskov, who also stated what Maria Zakharova said: the theme of returning Crimea will not be discussed. He stressed Russia does not discuss its territorial integrity with foreign partners. 
So they're not planning on giving up Crimea. And as a result of that, it's basically going to come down to one thing. If Ukraine wants it, Ukraine is going to have to fight for it. And at this point, Ukraine is not a NATO partner, although they have passed laws to allow NATO to come in to help them. The question is, is will NATO help them? I don't know if Donald Trump would help them. But if they can get Donald Trump out of power, they have a greater chance of Mike Pence definitely standing behind Ukraine and doing exactly that than that of President Donald Trump. And even when Donald Trump uh, tweeted this out, Brother Murphy, a dear brother of ours, sent this to us today. This tweet here, Crimea was taken by Russia during the Obama administration. Was Obama too soft on Russia? I can't help but think that President Trump didn't tweet this to try to show that he could be tougher with Russia. Maybe it is because of all the things that are going on right now that are surrounding uh, President Trump with all these allegations of Russian ties. You know, I'm sure he has some connections with Russia, but maybe not as big as what the FBI is definitely making it out to be. Another thing here going on in Ukraine, just to kind of share this with you here, uh, this, this report here came out today, uh, according to some estimates, over a thousand uh, Ukrainians in East Ukraine, those of the Donetsk and Luhansk region there, came to the hotel with the OSCE. That This is the uh, human rights monitors there. Uh, and protesting their bias towards Kiev's government, through, towards Petro Poroshenko, saying that they are not reporting on the attacks on civilian areas that are killing the elderly, the women, the children that are being killed by Kiev's bombs. The OSCE, they did come out of the hotel to listen to the complaints. They were holding up pictures of the OSCE uh, being seen with uh, Ukrainian tanks there inside of civilian populated areas, which is also causing strikes to be returned uh, into a civilian populated area by the Donetsk people there, causing a lot of people uh, to actually be killed as a result, especially the civilian population. And they are saying that the OSCE needs to open their eyes because they are not doing their job. The OSCE did take the microphone and return back talking to the people there as well, trying to defend their actions, saying that both sides need to stop the, the fighting and the conflict in order for there to be any kind of peace of the Minsk agreements whatsoever. But one thing that I thought was interesting in this is even one of Ukraine's own uh, journalists, clearly stated this last uh, escalation of violence was intentionally started by Petro Poroshenko. They started an offensive to try to take back eastern Ukraine. And this is what is called, causing all the deaths, especially to that of the civilian population. I'm Stephen Badoon. You're watching Israeli News Live.